So I went to put my piston on and it turns out that they sent me the wrong needle bearing. It fits on the uh, wrist pin just fine, but it's one millimeter small in the connecting rod end. So I just went back and scoured the city and never did find one, so I had to order one online. It took three days to get here. They're identical in their diameter, identical length, but this one is a little fatter, so it's one millimeter bigger on the outside. Apparently both are for uh, YZ-125s, it's just a different year or whatever. So they sent, they sent the wrong one. I gave them the right year and everything, but they sent me the wrong one. So, you know, we're only human. So I'm back another four days. So back to the piston. Uh, arrow forward. Line things up, push it in by hand. You don't need any tools for that. And Hey, lo and behold, this one doesn't slap around like lunatic. Be amazed what a, a millimeter difference makes. Here, we got a little bit more light on the subject. Okay, so I already have the C-clip on on this side. That helps you when you push in the pin, so you know you get your pin roughly centered. So I just got to put the C-clip back in on this side now. If I can find which bag I put it in, it's been a few days. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our C-clip in. Remember that you got the little slot down here, the gap, and your C-clip should go away from that. And you just want to look in around and just gently check to make sure it's actually seated all the way because sometimes the end of it won't. And there you go, we're in. Okay, at that point you can get rid of these here rags because nothing small is going to fall down inside anymore. Alright, next step, gasket. It only goes on one way. You can see the uh, power valve area cut out is really the only difference. You could theoretically do that, but... These two holes are larger to accommodate the dowel pins on this side. Nothing to it. Clean oil. And just lube up that cylinder. Do yourself a favor and hammer the piston as well. I said it a million times, I'd rather have a bike that smokes like crazy for the first 10 minutes than do some damage to an engine that I spent all this money rebuilding. Oil's cheap and smoke goes away. All right, so you got her all oiled up. What you wanna do is make sure your ring is in that slot. Now on this piston, it's about one o'clock, if we were to imagine a clock face, and you can feel it because it'll only push in when it's in there, okay? It should be flush. If you got one end sticking out, your ring is not in the right spot. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. Not so easy. Okay, so you can just see it there, what I'm talking about, where the piston is inside the cylinder. You can see it slides real easy, like I'm barely pushing on that. 
All right, so that's what you're looking for. Once you get it in that far, you can go ahead and put your cylinder all the way down. But I just wanted to show you that. The camera angle wasn't the greatest. Okay, so like I said, you can go ahead now and just walk the cylinder down. And you might get hung up on the dowels on this side. Um, it's okay to wiggle things around and use a little bit of force to get them over the dowels. You shouldn't have to go at it with a hammer and certainly don't hit, for God's sake, don't hit your mating surface here between your cylinder and your head. So what I like to do at this point is uh, throw the kicker on and just cycle the piston up and down slowly. And there goes some four-wheeler action. Just hold the cylinder down gently and you can see there's your piston moving up and down, no problem. Like I said, it should go real easy. Alright. Nothing to it. So we're ready to torque down our uh, nuts here. Now these ones are tricky because you need an adapter to get this guy. Which I don't have. All right, I'll torque down. I was able to torque three normally. Uh, the two back ones you can get with a straight socket. The one over here you need a socket like so. And this one does not work in here. So I ended up having to wrench that one and guess at it, which sucks. But this is what you have to do. Why they couldn't design the case a little bit better for that, but uh, you know, some days you have to deal with what you got. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the head on now. See there, it has nice and clean. A little bit of a mark there, but it's uh, good and flat. It's one of the cleaner heads that you see. If you, <laughs> you look on eBay for a used head, you're going to find something a lot dirtier than that. Okay, two O-rings. And the four-wheelers are back. Sometimes they'll stay in the holes, or sorry, in the groove. Sometimes they won't. Depends on the packaging and temperature and the stretchiness of everything. Okay, those are staying pretty good, but I'm still going to put some white lithium on there. Soap-based lithium. Okay, head goes on. Water uh, outlet at the back, inlet, whatever. Your bracket would go here. I actually have to make one of those because I don't have one. Okay, bought five new copper washers for the head bolts. Uh, if your washers are in good shape, I, you can skip that step. I mean, they're not expensive, but uh, it's something people don't think about, right? They just figure they're regular washers. They're actually copper, and they do get squished over the, over the years, especially if you're done more than one top end kit. So, you know, for the sake of a few bucks. There's budget builds and then there's smart budget builds. So torques on these are uh, 20 foot pounds, uh, what is it, 30 newton meters. Uh, you're doing them in a star pattern, so you're crisscrossing. Doesn't matter where you start, where you end. It's uh, just a matter you do with a star pattern. And the reason for that is so that you don't warp the head while you're tightening it. I'm actually getting a little excited here. It's been so long. I bought this bike in April. And, uh, actually, it might have been even the end of March. And <laughs> it's now almost the end of July, or end of June, sorry. Don't listen to me. So 
what I like to do is just take them down until they're tight and go around again later and torque them all up then. This is a short socket might have been better. Okay, so they're all tight, so now I can go ahead and torque. currently being eaten by a mosquito on my leg. And here you go. Head's torqued. All right, power valve linkage has a little spacer. Okay, and then you can put your linkage on. Now you have to line up the power valve linkage with the power valves itself. You just kind of pull up slightly on the governor there. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on here. You'll end up with what happened to this bike is it broke and had to be welded. Give me a washer next and then your bolt. Now the bolt that was actually in there I had to cut out. So I'm gonna go with the hex one that I have. And you see here as you turn it, the power valve will the shaft here itself will open open and you're what you're doing is you're putting all this tension on the rod and the linkage and everything and it's acting against the governor spring so what you're supposed to do is block it they sell a tool but uh guess what 11 millimeter socket does the same thing okay so just jam it in there like that that way the linkage won't get all this pressure on it and you can go ahead and torque that i'm just gonna button it up here real quick and then Grab my torque wrench. All right, we're gonna do the power valve cover now. You wanna put this little rubber in place first. Keep the mud out. Now, the gasket, if you try to hold it onto here, you can see it's really flimsy gasket. It's gonna be troublesome. So you're better off to put a couple of bolts in here and hold the gasket in this way and then slide it all on as one unit. I usually just put these two bottom bolts in here. 